Hey everyone, and welcome to Skill Capped. In this guide, we're going to break down the Phantom's strengths, weaknesses, and how to get the most effectiveness out of this rifle. The age-old question of which rifle to use will haunt Valorant players' minds surely until the game is dead. But having knowledge of which scenarios the Phantom excels at will help ease your mind when you do decide to purchase one for yourself. With the Phantom being the rifle of choice for most of the elite level players, it's at least worth learning how to use the gun properly since the popularity of weapons tends to trickle down from what the pros use into your own ranked games. Sometimes you have one of those rounds where you lose a duel because of the dreaded 140 damage headshot. It's easy to just chalk it up to not having a Vandal in that situation. But it's important to remember that with a Phantom in hand, you have to set yourself up for different types of fights in order to avoid these unfortunate circumstances. And if you're serious about improving, then go to skillcap.com to unlock our hyper improvement system that will teach you how to win more gunfights, master your agent, and so much more. Backed by our ranked improvement guarantee, you have nothing to lose. So come join over half a million satisfied members of Skillcapped, improve the KDA, and get the rank you've always wanted at skillcap.com. Link in the description below. To start off, let's take a look at the stats of the Phantom to get a better idea of what makes this rifle so strong. The Phantom has a fire rate of 11 rounds per second, 9.9 .9 rounds per second when aiming down sights coupled with a 30 round magazine, and 90 reserve rounds, adding up to 120 rounds in total. To put this in perspective, let's compare these stats to the rival rifle, the Vandal. The Vandal has a fire rate of 9.75 rounds per second, 8.775 rounds per second when aiming down sights coupled with a 25 round magazine, and 75 reserve rounds, adding up to 100 rounds in total. When looking at these weapons side by side, it's clear that the Phantom's strength is the higher fire rate and surplus of bullets. When you add the fact that the recoil on the Phantom is much more manageable than the Vandal, it's obvious that the Phantom was made with spraying as its primary function as a weapon. Much like the Spectre and Ghost, the Phantom is a silenced gun. Guns with silencers are given a couple of perks that the other weapons don't have, such as a quieter sound when fired, even to the point of not being able to hear the gunfire from 40 plus meters away unless you are in the direction of the shot. But, the more important factor to consider is that your bullets don't have a tracer when you shoot. This means that your gun does not give a visual representation of where you are located based on your fired rounds. This is extremely important in masking your positioning in firefights where you aren't immediately visible to your opponents. We will explore this concept in more depth later on in this guide. The Phantom is starting to sound like an overpowered gun based on what we've talked about so far. However, there are some downsides of the gun that we need to go over. The farther your shots go, the less damage they will deal. This is quite apparent when you look at the damage drop off for headshots. From 0 meters to 15 meters, the Phantom will one shot headshot a fully armored opponent. Once we pass the 15 meter threshold though, a single headshot will only do 140 damage which isn't enough to kill an enemy with full armor. Then at the 30 meter mark and onwards, the damage drops off to 124 damage in a single headshot. These numbers may seem like a large disadvantage when compared to the competition, but the stat that gives a much better picture is the time to kill. Time to kill is the amount of time required to kill an enemy with a specific weapon. If we look at this chart, we can see that in fights 15 meters and below, the Phantom is strictly better than the Vandal when it comes to body shot time to kill and the same for headshot time to kill. Everything past 15 meters, the Vandal does have an advantage for headshot and body shot time to kill. But as you can see here in the headshot row for the Phantom, the time to kill for headshots is the same for medium and long range fights. Even though the Phantom's headshot damage does fall off from 140 to 124 when moving from 15 meters to 30 meters, a body or leg shot after a 124 damage headshot is still enough to finish off an enemy. This guarantees that no matter what range you are fighting in, a phantom will always be a two shot kill if you do hit a headshot. Pair this with the aim punch mechanic that is in Valorant and now finding far range phantom kills seems a lot more realistic. If you didn't know, 
Aim punch is when your screen jumps up for a brief moment whenever you are shot in the head. So, if you do land a headshot before your enemy can get a clean rebuttal, landing the second shot should be uncontested. With all this information about the Phantom, let's go over some real game scenarios in which we can abuse these strengths. Having a silencer gives the Phantom a unique power of easily finding frags through smokes. Many believe that killing someone through a smoke must either be a vac moment or all luck. While there is a luck component to it, having the game sense to shoot in the proper direction to get the kill is a skill that you can train. The Phantom makes this process much easier and safer. As we mentioned earlier, silenced guns like the Phantom do not have bullet tracers. These tracers would usually help the enemy decipher where exactly you are shooting from, causing a potential turnover situation where the enemy could kill you instead. Without bullet tracers, the enemy must solely use the audio cues from your weapon in order to track down your position. The silencer even lowers the volume of your gunfire, making the audio cues that they have to rely on to be more vague. Some may consider these frags to be only found in edge cases, but thankfully we have some statistics from Master Reykjavik to shed some light on this myth. In the NA versus EU matches, 62 frags were through smokes. 49 of them were done by the Phantom which comes out to 79% of the smoke frags. During these matches, 62% of players would choose the Phantom over the Vandal. So even if we take into account the Phantom versus Vandal usage stats, 79% of the smoke frags being done by the Phantom is still a stark difference. When we look at this data, it's safe to assume that the Phantom has a proven track record on exploiting shooting through smokes as a viable strategy. Let's take a look at some of the clips from this tournament to see how to properly spray through smokes. Our first clip comes from the first map of the version 1 vs Team Liquid series. On the 17th round with roughly 37 seconds left in the round timer, Team Liquid is poised to go for a full 5-man execute onto A site. Fortunately for version 1, Zelsus has all of his killjoy utility placed in front of A main for when they do attempt to flood into A site. As soon as Yampi dashes past Flowerpot, Zelsus is blocked by Link's Brimstone Smoke. Zelsus knows that a likely play Jets will make after using their dash towards screens is to push through elbow to pinch the A site player from both ends, or to tuck themselves into elbow to hold any pushes through the screen smoke while they have cover from Raptors. Both of these outcomes could easily lead to the demise of Vanity who is anchoring on A site. So Zelsus retaliates by spraying through the brimstone smoke before these scenarios could happen. This results in Zelsus killing Yampi, allowing Vanity to solely focus on the players running through A main instead of having to deal with multiple angles simultaneously. If Zelsus wasn't willing to take a proactive approach here by shooting through the smoke, Vanity would have probably died on the site, giving up A site and potentially the round. This also could have easily been countered if Zelsus was using a Vandal in this instance since it would have given Team Liquid a better idea of where his position was so they could shoot back. The Phantom is clearly a superior weapon when it comes to spraying through a smoke with its easier spray, its silencer, and extra rounds. With Valorant having so many penetrable walls, the game has a heavy emphasis on fragging by using wall bangs in many of the maps. The Phantom is the perfect choice when it comes to the rifles for achieving these VAC-like kills. If you didn't know, both the Phantom and the Vandal have medium penetration. So in that regard, the Phantom doesn't necessarily have an advantage in that department. Even so, many of the Phantom strengths that we mentioned earlier in this video also apply to the wall bank capabilities of the Phantom. The silencer's ability to hide your bullet tracers is still relevant even when shooting through walls. Shooting through a wall with an unsilenced weapon will give the enemies an opportunity to use your tracers as an aid in shooting back. Also, since shooting through walls does lessen the overall damage output of your gun by a significant amount, even if you do land your shots through a wall, you will need more rounds to reach similar damage if they weren't behind a wall. On top of this, you aren't likely to hit every shot perfectly when you don't have vision of your enemy. When you combine these factors together, having a bigger magazine and 20 extra rounds in total goes a long way in ensuring you don't run out of ammo later on in the future. If you are struggling to find strong wall bank spots in Valorant, we also have plenty of guides on our YouTube channel that go in great depth on where you can get easy wall bank kills. On the topic of the Phantom having extra ammo, we should mention there are maps that have breakable barriers placed onto penetrable walls before you're able to shoot through them. A perfect example of this is the barriers on the garage doors on Haven. 
A common way to start the round as an attacker is by shooting these barriers down so that the defender in garage always has to think about the possibility that they could be wall banged from anyone in grass. If we compare the amount of bullets needed to break these barriers with the Phantom versus a Vandal, the Phantom takes 12 bullets to destroy a single barricade from the spawn barrier and the Vandal takes 10 bullets to destroy a single barricade from the same positioning. A 2 round difference to break a barricade when compared to an extra 20 rounds in total is pretty substantial, especially if you plan to wallbang through the same door you just opened. Losing out on a frag just because you ran out of ammo is one of the worst feelings in the world, so mitigating this situation as much as possible is in our best interest. We've gone over how the Phantom's characteristics assist in tallying up extra frags when you don't have vision of your opponent via a smoke or a wall, but what about situations where you do have vision of multiple enemies? The Phantom's biggest pro is its capability in killing multiple enemies in quick succession. The Phantom's lowered recoil and spread during its spray pattern is much more reasonable to control, letting players use spraying much more liberally whenever they see fit. Since this is the case, being able to continue your spray rather than having to wait for the recoil to reset becomes a viable option in more circumstances. That time waiting for the recoil to reset could be just enough of a window to allow the enemies to trade their fallen teammates and snub your potential multifrag. This is even more apparent when conjoined with the silencer of the phantom since the absence of a bullet tracer and loud gunshot may give you just enough time to continue that spray onto the next enemy before they can realize where exactly they need to look for the trade frag. With Valorant having so many abilities in the game and the chaotic nature of how ranked matches work, any small advantages of masking your presence is way more effective than it actually appears. As we discussed earlier in this guide, the Phantom has a 30 round magazine compared to the 25 round magazine that the Vandal has. 5 bullets may not seem like much in the grand scheme of things, but when you're in a scenario where 2-4 to four opponents are on your screen and you need to kill them in a row without reloading, those 5 bullets could be your saving grace. We also have to take into account that not all of our bullets will perfectly hit when we are trying our best to spray transfer onto different enemies. Extra rounds to help reduce the user error that comes with spraying is vital. Now, let's see a great example of how a pro uses the Phantom to capitalize on the multi-fragging potential that the Phantom has. Our clip comes from a pro match of TSM Sub Rosa vs BBG on Ascent. After Sub Rosa finds a quick kill onto the enemy Killjoy, he decides to walk push through B main to gain map control. If we fast forward just a bit into the same round, Sub Rosa's teammates communicate that BBG is fully committing into A site and he quickly pushes through mid to rotate towards A. Once he reaches tree, he shoots down the door with his teammate and takes a moment to reload. TSM is down a player, making it a 3v4 scenario. The fact they are down a player and also have both the Astra and Sova ulti, they quickly make a plan to use both of these alts when the spike is starting to plant. As soon as the enemies start to plant the spike, Sub Rosa flashes with the support of both of his teammates ultimates and swings. If we let the clip play out, we get to witness one of the best spray transfers that has ever occurred in Valorant Pro play. The Phantom's easier spray gave life to this insane highlight clip. In addition, if we take a closer look at Sub Rosa's ammo count during the spray transfer, we see that he ends the play with only 3 bullets left before he has to reload, using exactly 27 rounds to finish 4 frags in the span of 2 seconds. The 30 round magazine barely squeezed out enough juice to let this multi-frag happen. Hopefully, you are now a firm believer that the Phantom is the weapon of choice when it comes to creating spray down opportunities such as this one. Since we've spent much of this guy talking about what places the Phantom excels in, we should now bring light on how to practice using the Phantom so that we can emulate these outcomes. All of the situations we just highlighted focus on the effectiveness of the Phantom spray. So let's start with a basic exercise that hones the fundamentals of spray control. To start, enter the range, then make your way to the shooting range. Buy yourself a Phantom, then press F3. On the bottom right of the menu, turn infinite ammo off. Once you are done, move over to the bullseye target. Set the distance of the target to 10 meters. Your goal now is to spray the entire 30 round magazine into the target dummy's head. Thankfully, when you shoot the dummy, a number appears above his head that displays the amount of total damage inflicted and how many rounds hit. At this range, hitting around 20 to 25 bullets is a great benchmark. If you feel like this is a daunting task or just want to educate yourself on the mechanics behind spraying, we do have a more in-depth guide on the specifics of spraying on our YouTube channel. 
you may find yourself overshooting how much you need to pull down, resulting in a majority of body shots rather than headshots. At 10 meters, you should be able to land most of your shots onto the head. So focus your energy on making sure that your vertical spray control is maintained at head level even if you do miss some of your shots because of the horizontal sway that comes with the spray pattern. You will have much more success in your recoil control overall if you focus on the vertical segment first since this is where the vast majority of your kills will come from. It also assists in learning the horizontal part of the spray pattern since you don't have to readjust the vertical level and can solely think of moving the crosshair left or right to counteract the sway. Once you feel comfortable at this range, change the target dummy's distance to 20 meters. Then repeat the same exercise of emptying a full magazine into the target. With this change of distance, the goal of maintaining that most of your hits are headshots becomes a bit less realistic. Instead, focus on making your first 6 bullets headshots since these have the least amount of variability. Any rounds fired afterwards, prioritize hitting the target in the shoulder or neck area to have the highest amount of rounds hit. Any headshots after the 6th bullet should be seen as extra credit, but remember to prioritize hitting as many bullets as possible. Landing 20 to 25 bullet sprays at this range is still a reasonable goal and should be strived for. Yet again, once you feel confident at this range, up the distance to 30 meters. This distance is definitely a bit ridiculous for a full 30 round spray, but practicing in extreme environments such as this one can aid you whenever you are placed in those edge cases of elongated long range duels. Apply what we discussed earlier in the 20 meter exercise of focusing on headshotting with the first 6 bullets, then try your best to just land the rest of the magazine at the torso level. Headshotting the majority of your bullets at this range is near impossible. So temper your expectations and be content with the number of bullets landing, rather than where they land. This may seem like a simple practice drill, but the fundamentals of spray control are paramount when it comes to using the Phantom. Our second practice drill pertains to the multi-fragging capability of the Phantom that we had brought up earlier in this guide. Much like the start of our previous practice drill, enter the range and buy yourself a Phantom. Press F3 and ensure that the buy armor and infinite ammo are both set to on. Move to the firing range itself, then shoot the practice box to spawn the target dummies. Hop over the screen so that you are in the firing range itself. From this point, pick a target and place your crosshair on their head. Then mentally choose another target that you are going to flick to. Once you've decided, flick to that bot that you chose and start spraying. As soon as you kill that target, transfer your spray back to the initial target that you were hovering over before you flicked. The end goal is to cleanly flick and kill your second target, then continue your spray back to the first target so you can kill them with one single spray transfer. This drill trains two separate elements of your spray. First, your ability to readjust your spray at the beginning in case you do miss your first shot because of a missed flick. You can't always depend on your first shot from your flick to land whenever you are in a real game scenario. So being able to quickly readjust your crosshair so you land the headshot in the second or third bullet with ease is a much needed skill. And second, your ability to transfer your bullets onto another target when you're already in the middle of a spray. If you want to truly maximize the multi-fragging of the Phantom, mastery of the spray transfer technique is crucial. If you feel like you need a bit of assistance in tracking where your bullets are landing, you can open your settings menu, and on the general tab, scroll down until you see the show bullet tracers option. Toggle this to on. Don't worry though, this only turns on first person bullet tracers and doesn't affect what other players see. With this turned on, you are able to visibly see where your bullets are going making it much easier to track your accuracy. Another option that may help you in mastering your spray is under the crosshair section. In the general subsection, you should see an option called fade crosshair with firing error. Turning this option on will cause the top of your crosshair to fade away dependent on where exactly you are within the spray pattern. The more transparent your crosshair is, the farther you are within the spray pattern. This is helpful for giving you a rough idea of how far you need to pull down to compensate for the recoil by giving you another visual indicator to use as a reference. Most of the perks that come with using the Phantom stem from how powerful it is to spray with the weapon. If you don't have competency with controlling the spray, you lose almost all of the benefits that come with it. And remember, if you want to improve, win more gunfights, and get the rank you've always wanted, then check out skillcap.com. Link in the description below. Otherwise, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to get more premium guides just like this one.
We here at Skillcap want to thank you for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.